In the previous lecture, we explored how dimensionality reduction techniques can help us understand the variance of data using principal component analysis. Last time, we used this small data set. The data set has only two types of breast cancer, normal-like and cloud and low. And of course, using PCA, we clearly saw separation between the two groups. But now we will take a different data set. This data set has all the subtypes of cancer. And now this becomes a much more challenging problem. Not only do I have more samples, I also have more subgroups. So we will explore how PCA can give us some insight but it's not very conclusive. So we will refer to clustering techniques in order to take a better look at the different options that we have to deal with the data and its complexity. I'm going to take the file that I gave you and I'm going to press continue and just to explore what's in it, first use PCA. Now PCA, Principal Component Analysis, should give me some kind of an understanding of what trends, major trends, could be found in the data. So let's take a look after the pipeline runs. So the pipeline finished, let's take a look at the results. And of course download all results zip. But in our case, let's first take a look at the plot. And the plot uh, will be showing us the samples and mark them by the type of group that they belong to. So several things that we need to take a look at here. Let's open this. And the first thing that we see is that luminal samples are all on this side, and then all the rest are on this side. Now what is good about this is that we know that luminal are luminal subtypes are separated from the rest and we can even say that maybe this um, basal group is also fairly easy to distinguish but it's not so easy about the other ones. The second thing that we can see is the percentage of variance that these PCs explain. So together they actually don't explain that much. You can see that this is about 12.62, 18.08, so together that's about 30 percent, so really not that much. And so also together with this you then have other components, other principal components. You can see that on this one for example there is a better maybe separation between cloud and low and then basal and normal like right so they are more separated uh, here on the opposite side they're all more grouped together so probably not the best combination of principal components but because we can see here pretty good separation now we can assume that if we use a different method, a method that doesn't just reduce the, dimension, the dimensionality, but a method that actually assigns these to a specific group. So how do we do that? We need to use clustering techniques. So let's go back to the platform and let's create another unsupervised analysis pipeline. We'll upload the same file that we have cell lines marked and press continue let's do start and let's try hierarchical clustering now here I know that I have four clusters so I can just put in four here for example I do need to transpose um, and then here you can see that I have multiple types that I can select so let's select ward D2 and keep this at Euclidean. Click on save and then end. Okay, so this is going to be my H clust. Okay, 
let's run this pipeline. Then let's create another one. Again, upload the same file. Start. Now let's try k means. And then you can also read about what k means does when you see the pop up. You can pause there and read how k means is different. Okay, and let's create another one. Again, we'll upload the same file. Spec. You can see also how many do we expect? Let's expect four. Run pipeline. It's great unsupervised. Okay, let's add file. DB scan. Okay, so let's take a look at hierarchical clustering. What did we get here? So we have all of the expression data marked. We have PDF file that we can take a look at again. Let's take a look at that one. Okay, and let's try and see. So here we also see two main clusters, but it's hard to see kind of what else can we find here without annotating them? So let's go ahead and look at the clusters only table. So here's our cluster only. Let's open it up in Excel. Okay, and let's add here the information that we have about these clusters. We are going to take this group and we're just going to uh, do paste special, transpose, and now we have groups. Maybe this is not the best clustering, right? So the way we can know is we can sort this, let's say ascending, okay, and let's see which ones work correctly. So we see that two normal likes were grouped with basal, but at least basal and normal like are all number one. Cloud and low was done correctly, but luminal also has two and three. The result isn't that great. I created a few more pipelines, including dbscan, k-means with other iterations and cluster number, hierarchical clustering with a different number of clusters, and others. Now I'm doing this just to compare the results. So let's take a look at what comes out. I assembled all of the results and I'm looking at the differences between them. And what comes out is that k-means and hierarchical clustering actually produce the best results out of all. Most of the time the predicted cluster is correct, but it oftentimes happens that for luminal there seems to be two different clusters, one and two in this example, or in this example it was two and three. Now they don't exactly match up, but this isn't biologically meaningless. In fact, we know that a lot of classifiers identify luminal as having two subtypes, luminal A and luminal B. But which technique is the best? 
how do I choose something that will work better for my data? Well, the simple answer is, of course, I need to know a lot more about my data before I jump to selecting one method over the other. But I also need to understand the method. So in our next lecture, let's talk about how these different methods compare to each other and what situations would they work best in.